Hey guys, today we're going to make a short video about how to cure turkey legs and thighs. It's not a big deal, but it's an important step that a lot of people tend to skip whenever cooking dark meat. And what we're going to do is we're basically just going to cure it and get a lot of the moisture out of it and concentrate the flavors that are in there and just really make them delicious whenever we get to cook them. That way we don't have to saturate them in all these other dirtying, muddling flavors and really just like bring forth the flavor of the turkey itself whenever we go to circulate it later on. Alright guys, so I have a lot of my uh, favorite spices here that we're going to be using today and I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing as we go through. If you notice, all of these are going to be dry spices uh, and we're going to do that so that we're not putting moisture in. We're literally going to try to pull as much moisture out of the turkey as possible. So we're going to mix a bunch of these with some salt and a little bit of sugar and that's going to allow us to pull a lot of the moisture out. So we're going to start with a little bit of cinnamon. We don't need a whole lot because we're not really trying to flavor it and cinnamon will be overpowering if you let it be coriander. Just kind of lighten it up and keep it refreshing. A little bit of cumin also we're going to round it out. I'm going to go with paprika. Kind of give it a little bit of spice and a little bit of depth there. I like paprika. We'll give it a little extra. I'm going to go with bay leaves. These are all ground. That way you don't have to deal with the texture of the bay leaf but you get the flavor. We have some rosemary in here. It's a little coarse, but it's not a big deal because we are going to rinse the cure off after it cures overnight. We have garlic powder, and like I mentioned, we're not using any wet or fresh herbs or spices today. We're going with uh, all dry because we are trying to pull out a lot of the moisture, uh, which is one of the benefits of curing itself. So we got celery salt there. I love celery salt. It's one of my favorites. And we got some dry parsley. Got some red chili flake, just to kind of give it a little bit of a spice and round it out a little bit. And then the main carrier for the cure is going to be salt. We're going to go really heavy on salt. This is actually the coarse Morton's kosher salt. So um, we really, really like the coarse. And then we're just going to finish off with just a little bit of sugar to kind of round it out. All right, guys, so now that we have our turkey, we have our big, beautiful turkey thighs here. And what we're going to do is we're going to coat them really well. We want to make sure that we just get the salt and the spices and herbs down in all the cracks and stuff and all the places. And then we're just going to shake off the excess and just line them out. We want to make sure that they don't overlap at all and just kind of get them coated really well. Um, everywhere that they're wet, you just want to make sure that the, the cure sticks to them really well and gets everything nice and flavorful. Um, and keep in mind that this is not an extremely fast process, but it's an easy process because what we're going to do is we're going to let these cure overnight due to like the size of these um, leg and thigh. Uh, plenty of moisture in there to take out. So we're just going to make sure with the shape of the leg that we be able to get the bottom, bottom pretty well. And uh, overnight in the refrigerator should work out about right for these. So, you notice we got a little bit of cure left here in the bottom. Uh, after we do a few of these, the cure is going to start getting sticky. Uh, I knew that I only had to do four pieces tonight, so we went ahead and just stuck all four pieces directly into the brine. If that wasn't the case, if we did have, um, you know, less to do, or more to do rather, we would wait and put a little bit more cure into the bowl as we go, but we don't, and that's why we also didn't make much cure. Hey guys, welcome back. It's the next day. Uh, we did let the turkey thighs cure overnight, so we're going to take a look at them here in a minute and just discuss what they've done and how we're going to cook them tonight for dinner. Alright guys, so if we take a look at the turkey thighs and legs here themselves, you notice uh, that they have a, a pretty dry look around them, and you notice that a lot of the liquid has gathered in the, in the lower part of the tray. Uh, a lot of times in the States, I would put these on a roasting rack so that they wouldn't actually be sitting in the liquid. But uh, here in the Caribbean, some things are harder to find than others. So now what we're going to simply do is just run cold water, nice and gentle. And we're going to rinse as much of the cure off as we can. And what that's going to do, it's going to keep it from being over seasoned. So at this point, the thighs are already, and the thighs and legs rather, are already seasoned quite well because they've been soaking in that salt overnight and that salt's what's been pulling the moisture out. So if you look at it up close, you can actually see that the meat's a little bit darker and it's just, it's nice and has, has a little bit of a firm texture to it. 
and that's just where it's all tightened up due to losing moisture. What I have here is just a standard gallon size Ziploc freezer bag. And we're going to go ahead and rinse off the rest of these thighs and legs. And then we're going to get them in a water bath to cook in the circulator tonight for dinner. We have a, a water bath set up over here that we'll see in just a second. It's set at 165 degrees, and that's because we're trying to reach the confit texture of the turkey by dinner time. As you can see again, it's got that nice dark color to it now, and everything's kind of tightened up a little bit. So here we are. We have the turkey thighs and legs in the bag, uh, not sealed, and we've just chopped up a little bit of celery and some uh, smashed garlic cloves. Just literally peeled them and smashed them with a knife. And now we're just going to take a little bit of uh, lemon zest, just the outside, because we don't need a whole lot of the acid from it, but a little bit of the lemon flavor and get the oils out of the peel uh, is always good. Just kind of give it a little bit of depth and a little bit of background flavor. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take all of this and throw it in the bag. I try to spread it out a little bit, but it doesn't have to be perfectly even because it is going to be in this bag for uh, probably around nine hours or so, maybe eight. And uh, all the juices are kind of going to get flowing anyway in there. And now we're going to show you how to seal the bag and get all the air out of it for the most part, or at least enough of the air out of it without actually vacuum sealing it because, again, that's another one of those luxuries we don't have right now. So we have the turkey bagged up, not sealed. We have the circulator that's finally up to temperature, 165 degrees, which is where we're going to be cooking it tonight. So we're just going to remove the lid. I had the lid on just to kind of help it heat up faster, keep some of the hot air in there. And right now, what we're going to do is we're going to pick it up and we're going to slowly lower it almost all the way. Absolutely not all the way, but close to it down into the water. What we're trying to do is leave the seal above the water line and push as much of the air out as possible. Whenever the air expands, it's going to help us get more of it out of there because the same amount of air molecules are going to take up more space so we can end up with less air molecules in there. And then, as long as all of the meat and everything is actually submerged, it shouldn't be an issue. But if you do have an issue with that, sometimes you can take something simple like a plate and just set right on top of it to kind of help keep it underneath the water surface. And there you can see that everything is absolutely completely submerged, no issues. So now we're just literally going to put the top back on it, clamp it down, slide it back into the corner, and we're going to leave it there until uh, about eight hours from now. All right guys, so we're back. It's been about 10 hours. I checked it two hours ago and it wasn't quite ready. As you can see, the circulator is still on 165 degrees. And basically, we're just going to go ahead and take the whole thing out pop the top here. I'm gonna reach in. Water's hot so I'm just gonna use a pair of tongs, pull the plate out, and then the bag. Now what we're looking at to tell if it's done and the way we want it, we want it to basically be where you can push your finger into it and it's really soft. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take it out of the bag and show you. Alright guys, so I got them taken out of the bag and as you can see they're all nice and shiny and glistening and you can take your finger and literally just pull this right apart. Just nice and juicy, tender meat. It's been slow cooked. Another good thing about these is you can literally grab the skin and just roll it back. It's kind of slippery. So literally once you do that, and this is all just like perfect meat. And you can take it, turn it over, and just pull it right off the bone. It's just so soft. It comes right off. So we have a hot pan here. We're going to put just a little bit of oil in it to get things going. And once the oil starts to warm up, you see it move around a little bit. We have the turkey, and if you notice, it's been patted dry. It's no longer uh, wet because in the, in the circulator bag, it's always wet. And whenever you put something wet into a hot pan of oil, we all know it gets really, really rowdy. All right, guys, that wraps it up for the day. Thanks for watching, and let me know how it turns out. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks.